The following program is sponsored by Capitec. Simplify banking, live better. Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to the different ways of measuring greatness. Lesejo, aka Thick Leonce, turns the tables on cyberbullies to create a hit body positive message and fashion brand. Being the first black African to conquer Everest wasn't enough for Sibu Siso Vilane. He had to climb the seven summits and ski to both North and South Poles. Blacksmith and sculptor Conrad Hicks wrestles fire, steel and copper to his creative force of will. Seychelles artist turned designer Juliet Zalim captures the essence of her Spice Island home in show-stopping fashion. Meet Susan Prinsloo in her happy place as one of only seven women on the planet flying these 90-year-old Tiger Moth legends. And take a road trip down Route 62. Discover a world where everything is a pumpkin and the natural spa waters bubble up at a glorious 46 degrees. At the age of 90, your gogo doesn't want to be told she's great just for being around. Like this Tiger Moth aeroplane first built in 1930, she'd rather show all the things she still does so well. That's what made one particular pilot fall in love with this aircraft. Good day, Insider SA. I'm Susan Prinsler. I'm at Brackburn Aero Club today. I'm going to be flying my Tiger Moth today and enjoy the journey with me. Uh, my journey with flying started approximately 17 years ago. I started flying microlight. Someone introduced me into a microlight flight one day, and the next day, I decided that's what I want to do and I was 36 at the time and a week later I started training for my microlight license and then I went on to helicopter flying which I do mostly these days then I got involved into a flight school at Rand Airport where they operated the Tiger Moth and that's where I fell in love with the Tiger Moth so I bought this lovely lady Bravo Golf Lima it's just an amazing aircraft. By day, Susan is a pilot doing commercial flights, sports events, aerial photography, and advanced helicopter training. Guys, welcome to my office. This is where I relax between flights and do some office work. Um, as you can see, I have all my aircraft models here, and this is my baby. The the yellow Tiger Moth model that you see here was also an aircraft in the flight school and which was used for conversion training for pilots as well as scenic flights for clients. Later on I acquired uh, Bravo Golf Lima which is my current baby and passion. She also flew in the flight school for conversion trainings and scenic flights but I only fly her privately now and I will take you around and show you my precious baby and my passion. Before his famed World War II bomber, the Mosquito, aircraft designer Jeffrey de Havilland was best known for this beauty. Guys, this is my baby, uh, Bravo Golf Lima. She's called Bakhat Leti, that's her nickname. She served in the Royal Air Force and she also served in the South African Air Force. And later in the 1950s, she was sold as a private aircraft. And I'm the lucky owner of Bakhat Leti at the moment. As you can see, she's a tail dragger because she drags her tail. The tail is low. This aircraft has a lot of special features, can I say, that other aircraft doesn't have. She doesn't have brakes. The pilot sits in the back. The pilot cannot really see out the front unless it's a tall person. I'm short, so I don't see anything. So I literally stick my head out the side to see whether I'm taking off and landing straight. So many pilots who went on to fly jet fighters, the Concorde or massive jumbos, learned to fly in a Tiger. 
One thing I forgot about Bak Khatleti is that she still has her original seat belts dating from the day she was built, which makes it very special. They are very old and they look shabby, but they're original and they're still attached with the original cables. So the main reason why people are still so interested in the Tiger Moth is because it's a vintage aircraft. There's not many aircraft in the world turning 90 years old and still airworthy and actively flying. And also the fact that it served in the Royal Air Force and in the South African Air Force as basic military trainers and are still airworthy and flying. Another thing about the Tiger Moth is that there's no electrical system in the Tiger Moth. So the radio works by a bike battery, literally, which gets charged overnight, and that is your communication. When we come up to these two switches, these are my two magneto switches. Once I switch these switches in the on position, my prop will be live, and I'll be starting my engine swinging the prop. Another interesting feature about the Tiger Moth the engine is installed inverted, in other words, it's upside down, and that is for better visibility over the nose. Not that I have any visibility even with it installed upside down. <laughs> and to complement my attire, I have this lovely vintage helmet, uh, which looks exactly like the uh, ones they used uh, during World War II. And to complement my leather helmet, I have this vintage goggles, which complements the vintage look. Next comes the difficult part. Uh, this aircraft is quite a handful to take off and land because she's a tail dragger, first of all. Secondly, because she doesn't have brakes. So the first thing you need to do taking off, obviously, is full power. And then you need to ease forward on your control stick to lift your tail so that the aircraft is in a level position to build speed for takeoff. And if you push your stick too far forward, uh, you can fall over onto your nose, damaging your prop and your engine. If the tail is too low, you build speed too slow and you'll also not be able to take off. So the aircraft needs to be in that exact level position and that takes a lot of practice. Just another interesting bit about the Tiger Moth is that once I've started my aircraft, I've checked that my oil pressure is sufficient and I've set my altitude. I don't use the instruments in my aircraft. This freedom is the payoff. And in tribute to these timeless machines, Susan was key to organizing the South African leg of a worldwide anniversary for this aircraft. Today we're busy at the Brock Pony Field with the Tiger Moth Meet, celebrating the 19th year of the Tiger Moth throughout the world. We were very privileged though to have seven of the aircraft out here. And we all here, we've got a lot of safety marshalers out here. And the plan today is to just keep everything in touch with the safety rules of any fly pass or fly-ins that we have at these civilian airfields. Susan and her fellow Tiger enthusiasts hope to attract more women pilots to their ranks. It's really sad that there's only one or two females that does this and there's no technical reason why a female cannot be a pilot. Getting more girls into this, I think we should seriously look at exposing schoolgirls, everything to flying and it's a passion. So if they have the passion, they should be able to follow their dream and become pilots. How does it feel to be the only woman in Africa flying the Tiger Moth? It's quite overwhelming. I only found out last week that I am the only woman in Africa holding a license on Tiger Moth and one of seven women in the world flying the Tiger Moth. So it's still very new to me and I must say it feels very overwhelming and uh, it's quite an amazing feeling. Any machine still spreading its wings like this at the age of 90 is rightly known as one of the greats. So too the dashing women pilot who is keeping the legend alive in our African skies. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 5.30. Repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.